Twitter, Instagram. And you know what? You could even go ahead and put me on MySpace. Because there's only 10 people left on MySpace. Okay, everybody up there. Everybody up there with their Is anybody here on MySpace still? Never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Is there is there is there a, a, a thing for rabbits now? <laughs> I've got to get a rabbit then. <laughs> okay, Sam, hey, hey, the blues is all right. Hey, 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 hey the, the blues, blues is all right. right. Okay. Anybody who knows who's saying that? Little Milton. <laughs> right? Yeah. Too bad to be checked out early, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah that helicopter thing was really, really sucked out Pine Valley. But here we are, cigar box guitars. So let's start our set up. Uh, the big question is, uh, what's the big deal? You know, what? Why, not, why is everybody crazy about these things? What's the big deal about these things? I think the number one thing is is tone, um, being being uh, creative with just three strings. As um, somebody who has been, I've been playing guitar for about forty years, and you know, I work very hard on jazz. I work very hard on a lot of different songs. I play in copy bands, sound cover bands. My whole life is uh, you know working on the guitar. My whole life, all of a sudden. First time I saw the, the, the cigar box guitar was with Microwave Dave. We did a show in 1994 up in, in Milwaukee, and I heard the sound that he did, and I, I, I knew I had to get one of these. Um, and the, the, the thing that really makes this either a beginner, it helps you start to play, or you can also advance yourself on the lower part of the neck. With three strings, all of a sudden you're not thinking like in a six string way. If I'm up on stage playing this, all of a sudden, my scale lengths are not like, you know, with six strings. I have, to, I have to figure out a lineal passage to come all the way up here. So it really helps you if you're, if you're already a guitar player in helping you build your chops up on regular guitar. Because all of a sudden, you're really working on your, on your lower three strings instead of, a lot of, if you notice most guitar, guitar players, they're always playing like on the top three strings and bending the strings and it's like really great. You know, they're doing stuff, but they never really, concentrate on the lower strings. So having a three string guitar, because uh, I, I get criticized a lot by a lot of players. Oh, you know, <coughs> it's a toy, it's why are you doing this? Well, three strings really help you um, uh, develop your, your guitar playing. Now, this is also a great instrument for a beginner, uh, because when you only have three strings, it makes it a lot easier for you to just play a, a, a regular blues. All you gotta do is think about three strings. You don't have six. You don't have to worry about that, you know, the G string being, you know, you know tuning it up and, and worrying about that. So what you got is the basic blues. Oh baby, what's getting wrong with you? Really be basic. and they've got pretty fancy guitars. They could afford them, because they were already making some money. The, the problem with, with Martin and Gibson at that time, comparably speaking to what the prices you pay now, they, their guitars were very expensive. 
because they were all handmade. You didn't have a mass uh, production plants. So let's say you know you're in 19, 1921 and you're going to go ahead and buy a Gibson guitar. You know you're talking like in these day standards like two or three thousand dollars. You know c compared to what the money was back then. So what happened was a lot of a lot of the the guitar players, whether it be Appalachian, North Carolina, South Carolina, or the Mississippi Delta, they would just get an old cigar box and they would they would they would string. Uh, they started with the, the one string diddly bows. Sort of like with Ben Preston, just play like a two string. They have, um, you know, they just put it on a plank, no frets, and just do like a slide bailing wire. Because what happened was like a lot of the um, uh, the houses, you, you, they would put a, um, a piece of piano wire on the side of the house, and they would do a diddly bow. These started becoming popular because you could bring them out. So they would just. Uh, On there, so they would mimic the voice with the slide. So that's kind of um, a, a lot would happen. Now the Appalachian, um, uh, Appalachian guys would take something like this, which is a, this is a dulcimer. How many people know about dulcimers, bluegrass? Okay, good. So these are starting to become more popular. Instead of like a regular 12 fret, they would take a, a, a dulcimer. So this is a major, this is like a major step Questions. Back then, weren't those cigar boxes pretty large? Yes. Yeah, they were. They were a lot larger than, than most of the cigar boxes now. They were thicker. You know. Um, you know, if you could find some of those old Dominican Cuban cigar boxes, they're they were worth some money. Um, uh, Joe uh, Joe Bruno's here, isn't he? You know, he. Yeah, Joe, you should bring the. Um, that's a wine box. Did you get or cigar box? Is that a big? So that was like one of the large cigar bites. That's why he played the bass. I don't know if you were here before to see Joe, but Joe can bring that in and, um, and do that. Um, I don't. I've never really seen any pictures of, of, the, of the larger boxes like what he's done, but I've seen some pictures back then. But a lot of people didn't take the pictures. I mean, you know, Charlie Patton, Robert Johnson. You know, was, they would always be with a nice suit. You know, they you know they'd, you'd have a nice guitar. Probably just for the photographers. Yeah, for the photographers. Right. So. Let's go back to uh, the regular tuning here. Whoa! God, that just went over the fun. So, uh, so yeah. So pretty much, you can tune it to uh, you know a G. It's a G D G, or you can tune it A. Uh, a D A or A E A. Um, there's a lot of ground to cover. Um, there's a Chicken Bone John, then there's uh, Mark uh, and Shane's Field. And I've got a few uh, uh, instructional videos too. I'll give you my card if there's any questions because you can break down all the different tunes. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Is there a train? You can play a lot of different types of songs. It doesn't have to be just. You know, blue stuff. So, um, any questions? Okay. What G D G? G D G. Yeah. And I've got a four string. The last one's B. So. If okay. I'm free to say it's what you got. Can I plug that in, or do you? Well, I'll just yeah. Here. So, what you can do 
All right, so that's an open G. So now all of a sudden you got a four string. Now yeah. on the four strings, you can do a number of things. You can either go and do it like a ukulele tuning, um, top four string, um, pull the top. These, these three will be the same as what you just had there. You can just put that over somewhere. So this is this is an open G. So this is now there's a few things you, there's a few things you can do with this. <laughs> So, yeah, 
yeah, just a little bit more tuning on the button. Jimi Hendrix on a two string. Hello! It's like, you know, 
Oh no no, he, he's incredible, you know. So, <laughs> but then you know Ben can do a lot of stuff. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to compare everybody, but uh, so you can do a two string, three string, four string, five. Um, uh, when I do my next set, I'll, I'll play the uh, the mandolin. But Joe, you have the, uh, the so so this is interesting. Here's Joe Bruno. God bless Joe Bruno. I met him at a jazz jam a long time ago. And Joe, Joe taught me how to play blue bossa. Oh, I had no I had no idea what I was doing. I what I was doing at the jazz thing. I just decided to start a jazz jam and I just kind of lied through everything. <laughs> But Joe, but Joe was really cool. I met him and he taught me a lot. And, and so Joe's been really active in the cigar. How did you, how did you even get involved in all the cigar box crap? Uh, I play with a guy named Dovidog oh. or David Smash. And uh, Steve here brought this guy over from uh, Europe. Yeah, from Lithuania. Lithuania. And uh, that was about like six, seven years ago. And I just happened to meet him, started playing with him. And uh, we were doing a gig. Somebody made him a cigar box guitar a guy named Michael Greenlove, and I said, gee, you want to make one for me? And he goes, as soon as I find a box big enough, and he did. Wow. Uh, that's a hundred cigar box. And, and it was made in Nicaragua. They made ten of them. Seven were ordered by a uh, distributor. And uh, they had three left, and Michael got his hand on you all three boxes. So, yes. yeah. And this base, he hit a home run with it. It sounds incredible.